Hi, I just want to show you uh, in this tutorial how to do uh, a blurred tree picture, which looks like you're zooming up and down, or panning up and down, I should say, uh, with a reasonably long exposure. Uh, this is a shot I did up at Lady Bar Reservoir, uh, just at the beginning of May 2013. Um, you can see there are lots of uh, tree trunks. Uh, we're going to use those, and we're going to use some motion blur to uh, blur this out, add some energy into it, make it look different and a few little tips and tricks along the way. Uh, first thing I want to do is to uh, increase the canvas size. Um, I'm doing this because um, on the height we're going to be zooming in a vertical plane and I want to make sure it doesn't s the, the blur doesn't stop me end up with lots of little jaggies. And I'll show you this if I just increase this by 4 centimeters. So I'm going to just take this one up to 28. And I'm just going to do it on the height. I'm not going to do the width at all. And we can see there we get uh, this white edge around the outside. Uh, now I'm going to just e copy that. You can do Control J, Command J, uh, and on this, most of the trees here are in the, the vertical plane, probably about 90 degrees uh, in the motion blur uh, filter. So we're going to look at the filter and call it up. So if we go to filter, go across to blur, and go into motion blur, which is just down there. If you just click on it. Now, I'm not converting this into a, a smart object as such. I just want to keep this quite simple. You can see that it's not quite 90 degrees. Uh, if it's highlighted, you can always just click in 90. And you can see that all of a sudden uh, we've got that blurring going on. I'll just pull it back a bit. And it's quite flexible. If we had it as a smart filter, of course, you could uh, come back into this and edit it. I just want to do this as quickly as a a one-off piece. Let's keep it down to about there. That's okay. And you can see what's happened here. The blurring has actually gone into that extra canvas area uh, at the top and the bottom there. We've got a bit of a banding, but we're just going to use that to uh, um, make sure we don't get little jaggy lines at the end here. And we'll crop it back down again uh, before we um, finish it. So we've got two. You can see underneath there. Now you can actually um, reduce the opacity and blend things back in together again very simple so you're just adding a small amount of blur same thing again if you want to stick a mask on you can either just click on there and that'll just bring a white mask uh, control I L command I will invert that mask we can paint through so if you want to paint some blur around the edge let's just control I command I that back out again so if we chose a paintbrush we had it oh, let's have it at 30% uh, so hit 3 that'll take it down to 30% if you say uh, click on this tree trunk here and then hold down the shift key and just go down to here maybe go back up again holding on the shift key click up again you can see there it's drawing straight lines if we can just alt click on this layer mask here, you see it's just really join the dots so holding down your shift key and doing that will join up that into a straight line let's just alt click on that again um, you don't have to do that but let's just leave it in there because um, it looks quite good um, I'm going to call a layer up over the top and just click on the bottom there add a new layer I'm going to put this in color blend mode. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to add a um, gradient over this, just to show you what's possible. You can add any color. You could add a solid, solid color if you wanted to, and just blend it in color mode. Um, I'm going to go to gradients over here, and there's our gradient tool. So your paint bucket might be showing if you go across here. You might have your paint bucket show, showing. Your gradient tool is just hidden under there. Let's choose a gradient. Um, you've got your little drop-down menu here. You can actually reset or reload. Um, all different kinds of ones. I'm going to stick with these quite bright colours here. Uh, and as we drag, we're going to drag that gradient out into that colour layer. And you can see there, we get a crazy, <laughs> crazy forest scene. So I'm just going to take down the opacity somewhat on that. I quite like that. Uh, the thing to do now is to crop it down. And we're going to just use the crop tool over here. Uh, I just want to make sure the resolution is okay so I'm just going to crop it the center size as it was and then just go in here so yes yeah, it's at 72 that's fine by me uh, just click on it and just bring it in and uh, let's see we just crop this down let's bring it inside that uh, edge there maybe take it across bring some tree in there double click it and we'll come out of that there you go I'm going to crop it so you have a very simple, quick and easy way of doing your uh, tree blur images. 
Uh, the only thing, other thing you might want to do is to add some sharps into here. I'll show you how to do that now because we're going to do a, a stamped copy. Now, a stamped copy will uh, produce a composite layer of the three layers underneath. And to do that, we're going to go Shift, Alt, Control, and E. And you can see there above, we've got this stamped copy. We just take these out. You can see there, we're going to use this as a sharpening tool. And to do that, we're going to go across to Filter. We're going to enter Other, and we'll put it into High Pass. Now, what this is we're going to do, you can see here we've got these little edges of, of high contrast in the image running down. That's where your sharpness will occur. Uh, on this size of image, um, because it's only in 72 dpi, I want to do it around about a pixel or so. Click OK. And the trick is just to convert this into a hard light blend mode. So we just click on that. Um, I'm going to zoom in a bit. And just to show you how much sharpening goes into this, you probably can just about see in there and it's only sharpening in the center of these trunks here that I want to do so I'm just going to zoom out again uh, let's just bring it back up again uh, I'm going to put a mask on this and I'm going to mask it out so I'm going to hold down the alt key or the option key from the Mac just click on that that will give you a mask filled with black choose a paintbrush make sure it's chosen to be white if it's not you can always hit the X key that'll toggle between your black and your white 30% is good for me You're just going to go slightly up in size uh, make sure it's a too big. Make sure it's a soft brush. So go to your brushes. Just make sure you're working with a soft brush. That's fine. Your hardness is turned right down. And I'm just going to paint with the white, and just put some sharpness into those tree trunks there. In fact, I can put quite a bit in this one here. This is the one. Don't forget where we mask things out. So you've got the detail of the tree trunk coming through there as well. And there you got it, just a bit of edge sharpness inside the middle there. You've got an interesting piece of wall art. Um, I'm going to flatten this down now, so shift Control e that'll bring it down. The only thing I want to show you is to add a hue saturation above it. And now if you're not happy with the colours that you've applied with the gradient, um, let's work on the hue. And this is just working on the master. We can just drag that across and you've got flexibility in there just to change all your colours around. And that's not bad at all. Let's click that on and off. You can actually just use the eye toggle just to toggle backwards and forwards. Uh, if you want to change a specific colour, just go in with the eyedropper. That'll tell you it's working in the reds there. And you can change that around. That banding is not very really good, so let's just take it down to there. And I think I'm going to call it quits on that one. So that's really just working with it very quickly with uh, a tree image. Uh, don't forget to increase your canvas size. That's just going to stop any edge blurring that's uh, happening. I'm probably need to just trim it down a bit just to get rid of that on the top there. Uh, you can mask through it and add some texture into it. Uh, sharpen it with just a, a hard, light and duplicate layer over the top. Uh, and that's it. Publish it to the internet and sit back and wait for the applause. Okay, thanks again. Uh, until the next time, bye for now.